Hi, I'm DG Dino from Jinx Games, and this tutorial is about how you can make an interactive minimap. Let's get started. But first, I would like to thank everyone who purchased my Playmaker samples on the Asset Store. I would also like to ask if you could rate my asset and maybe give a review. Again, thank you. Okay, first I will show you how I made the map. So I have a canvas here and then I have an image for this border and then I have a raw image that is the white one here and I still need to put a texture in but I will show you in a minute. Then I have my camera here so I have a main camera and I have a second camera and let me turn this on and as you could see the game view changed to this camera and you can see now from the top here and in orthographic and also size 12 but that can be changed and also while playing you can change that then i have my clipping planes near zero and for 100 that's just for the how much you can see uh, in your game it might be bigger if you have uh, more depth than 100 so that depends on your game then I think the most other things are standard and then an important one is here this target texture in this target texture we need to place a render texture and let me go here and create a render texture and name this uh, test mini map then let's drop this in here oh, first you can see here that it's uh, black and now we're going to drop this in and then look back to the image here and now you can see it's showing the camera so instead of the camera is showing it on the screen now it's gonna show it on this texture so then we go to our raw image and drop in this texture and now we have our minimap and it's that simple now next we'll go over to the fsms so oh yeah also i have as a child here i have an object here just an empty object and i'm doing my raycast from here uh, and that i will explain you in a minute so first i have here on my image an fsm here and i have this yugo on pointer down event so it's waiting until i click on this uh, if I click outside, nothing will happen. If I click somewhere here, then I have an event. Then I have my calculator here. And this is actually going to calculate for my division. And uh, you can also do, do this already manual if nothing will change. But I think even nothing will be changed. It's still better to do it this way. Uh, it's not doing anything every frame so I think it's quite uh, quite light to do this so uh, it depends on you so what I'm doing here is rect transform get rect and I'm gonna get the rect width and the rect height so I'm gonna get the width from this and the height from this then I have the get camera ortho size so that is to get this ortho size uh, so if I would change it then it would be different also so that's why I'm always getting this then I'm gonna divide the rect width and the rect height by 2 and the reason I do this because uh, for example if my width would be 200 um, the center will be 0 and uh, on this side would be negative 100 and on this side would be positive 100 and the total would be 200 so that's why i'm dividing this then after i've divided this by two 
I'm going to divide this again with the ortho size. And I do this both for width and height. And then I have my divider. And that one I'm going to use in the next state again to divide the correct position. Uh, I will show you in a second. So I have my rect width and rect height here. And uh, I just use a single variable because I, I'm using this just once. So I'm getting this and then I just want to divide and divide and then the result I want to use here. So you can just use a single variable. That's fine. Next, I'm going to get my mouse position and I'm going to use rec transform screen point to local. That's a long one. So what this does is it's going to get the local position on this texture by using the mouse position and going to store this in the local position. Then I have an operator here and I'm going to divide again the local position by this divider, which I calculated here. And this is going to give me the raycast position. And um, then I'm going to use set position on my raycast to set this local position. Space self is important here. And then I'm going to send an event to the raycast to cast array. And then I have a next frame event just to be sure that um, it won't loop. And let's go now to the raycast. So actually what will happen here. So when I get this position, for example, if I would press here, then my raycast game object will move here and then do the raycast from there. Uh, if I would go here, then it would go on this side and anywhere where I will push, it would be on the correct position. So now let's show you the raycast. So I have my direction set in Y minus 10, which means that I'm going to go downwards with my raycast and the distance to 100. Again, this you can change larger if needed. And then I'm going to store the object it hit. And I'm also going to store the hit point. So the object and the position where it hit. Then in the next state, I'm going to compare the tag from the object that I hit. And if the tag is cubes, so all these cubes have a have a cube tag. Let me show you quickly here. Cubes. And the floor is just untagged. And let's get back here. So if it's a cube, then change material. So it won't continue here. It would change the material and set to yellow and then go back to idle. But if I don't hit a box, then I'm going to move my camera. So I have moved towards and I have set my minimap camera and the store hit point. Uh, ignore vertical because I don't want it to go down. And then I have my maximum speed set to 10 and a finish distance from 0 0.0001. Um, I cannot set this to zero because if it's zero, then it would not stop the action. So I, I want it just to stop. And that's about it. So let me show you how this works. Let it start playing. Here we go. So when I click, it's going to move around. And when I click on an object, it's going to turn them to yellow. Thank you for watching. If you like the tutorial, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can support my work by becoming a patron at Patreon or donate me with PayPal or purchase my assets on the asset store. You can find the links in the descriptions below.